good day. This is Swiss LM and we're back again with another math video. And today we're going to talk about the third part of triangle congruence postulates. So we are already done with the three triangle congruence postulates, naming the SAS, ASA, and SSS congruence postulates. Tapos na rin tayo sa proving triangles using the postulates, the definitions of terms, and also the properties. Now dito na tayo sa solving parts of triangles. Since we already know that if we have two congruent triangles, therefore the corresponding parts will be also congruent. So ngayon, kaya na natin mag-solve ng missing parts of two congruent triangles. Okay? So in this lesson, meron tayong three levels. Easy round, average round, and a difficult round. So are you now ready for the easy round? Okay, so for number one, we have this figure, triangle ABC and triangle XZY. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XZY. Now, the question is, what is the measurement of side XY? So, hanapin natin yung kakongruent niya. So, we have side AB, kakongruent niya si XZ. Side BC, kakongruent niya si ZY. And then, si XY, kakongruent niya si side AC. Therefore, the measurement of side XY is 6 centimeters. Okay? Next, we have these two triangles, triangle LMP and triangle PQR. What will be the measurement of angle R? Okay, so upon looking at the given measurements and these two triangles are congruent, so as you can see, 112 and 112, angle L is congruent to angle P, angle M is congruent to angle Q, therefore, angle P is congruent to angle R. Angle R will be 23 degrees also. And again, tandaan po kapag pinag-add natin yung tatlong angles na yan, equal po yan sa 180 degrees. So, ganun din dito. 180 degrees din po yan pag pinag natin. Okay? So, next, we have this given. So, statement lang po ang meron tayo. But, nakalagay po dito yung ating congruence statement. That triangle BTS is congruent to triangle ILY. So, using this congruence statement, malalaman natin kung aling parts niya ang corresponding congruent parts. Okay? Side BT is 18, side ST is 13, and side BS is equals to 9. What will be the measurement of side YL? So, tingnan natin mabuti. Alin ba ang kanyang kakongruen? YL. Alin po ba ang ating YL? So, we have this one, YL. So, we have ST. Ano po ang measurement ni ST? That is 13. Okay? So, YL or side YL is equals to 13. For the last item on our easy round, we have here, triangle BTS is congruent to triangle ILY again. Having angle B, which is 57 degrees, angle T is 68 degrees, and angle S is 55 degrees, what will be the measurement of angle Y? Again, by looking at the congruence statement, we can determine the two corresponding congruent parts. So, if we have angle Y, alin ang kanyang kakongruent? Angle Y is congruent to angle S. So, what is the measurement of angle S? That is 55 degrees. So, the answer here is 55 degrees. Okay, let's move to average round. So, we have this figure, two triangles, triangle ARY and triangle MRY. And these two triangles are congruent. Now, if we have RY with 8 centimeters, side AY and side MY as 6 centimeters, side AR as 10 centimeters, and side RM as X plus 2 centimeters. What is the value of X? So, what you have to do is to look at the congruent part of this side, side RM, and then we have to solve it algebraically. So, ano daw yung kakongruent ni side RM? That is side RA. So, we can say that 10 is equals to x plus 2, right? 10 is equals to x plus 2. So, simply, we have 10 minus 2 equals x or 8 is equals to x. x is equals to 8. So, the value of x is 8. Okay? So, the value of x is 8. Okay, next, number 2 on the average round. We have this triangle. Ayan, wala siyang pangalan but they are congruent. Having these angles... We have 27 degrees, 38 degrees. What will be the measurement or what will be the value of Y? Again, how many degrees are there in a triangle? So, the internal angles has the sum of 180 degrees. So, if we have 27 and 38, if we add those two and then subtract it from 180, 
what will be the value of y. So 27 plus 38, that is 65. So 180 minus 65, the answer is 115. Okay? So y is equals to 115. Okay. Last item for the average round. Given the triangle BTS is congruent to triangle ILY, side BT is 22, side ST is 11, and side BS is 14. Side IL is equal to 12 plus 5K. What is K? So, before you solve for the value of K, syempre, kailangan muna natin hanapin kung alin nga ba ang kakongruent ni side IL. Using the congruence statement, we have here IL, congruent niya si side BT. So, what we're going to do is to make an equation with side BT and side IL. So, 22 is equals to 12 plus 5K. Additive inverse of positive 12 or using the SPE, subtraction property of equality. So, we have to subtract on both sides, positive 12. So, 22 minus 12 equals na lang siya sa 5K. 22 minus 12 is 10 equals to 5K. Then, by DPE or division property of equality, divide both sides by 5. So, K is equals to 2. Okay? The value for K is 2. Again, what we need to do is to use the congruence statement. And then, from that congruence statement, we can determine which part of those two congruent triangles are corresponding and congruent. So, in this case, we have side IL and congruent siya kay side BT, kaya 22 is equals to 12 plus 5K. Okay, now, we're going to move at the difficult round. Ready na ba kayo? Okay. So, for number 1, given that we have these two triangles, triangle FLY is congruent to triangle PIE, and side FL is 5X plus 10, side LY is 7X minus 4, Side PI is 3x plus 14, and side PE is equals to 4x plus 7. The first question is, what is the value of x? Okay, so hanapin daw natin muna ang value ng x. Aling parts ngayon, nitong dalawang triangle, ang makakatulong sa atin para mahanap ang value ng x. Kung mapapasin niyo po, all of the parts have the variable x, but alin lang yung dalawang parts na congruent na pwede natin gawing equation. So, we have here side FL and side PI. Anong mangyayari po dyan? Magkakaroon tayo ng 5X plus 10 equals to 3X plus 14. So, 5X plus 10 is equals to 3X plus 14 because side FL is congruent to side PI. Okay, now we have to perform or solve this equation algebraically. So, yung may mga x variables natin, pagsasamahin natin sa isang side ng equation. Okay, so what is the additive inverse of positive 3x? That is negative 3x. And what is the additive inverse of positive 10? That is negative 10. Okay, now 5x minus 3x is 2x. 14 minus 10 is 4. Then, divide both sides by 2 para makuha natin yung hinahanap na value ng x. x is equals to 2. Okay? So, the value of x is positive 2. So, yung x na yan, applicable po yan sa lahat ng binomials na nakikita natin dito sa ating dalawang triangles. Now, if x is 2, what is the measurement of side yf? What is the measurement of side yf? So, ang tinatanong po ngayon, is this side. If x is equals to 2, what is the measurement of side yf? Alin po ang kakongruent ni side yf? That is side ep. So, if fy or yf is equals to side ep and side ep is 4x plus 7, so the measurement of yf and ep will be 4 times 2 plus 7. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 7, that is 15. So, side YF and side EP are both 15. Okay? Okay. Again, remember that from our first item here on the difficult round, we solve for the value of X that is positive 2. 
And then for the second item, we look for the measurement of side YF. And that is equivalent to side EP, which is 4x plus 7. Then we substitute the value of x, which is 2. And the resulting value of side EP and side YF is equals to 15. Another item, using this problem pa din po, or these two triangles, triangle FLY is equivalent to triangle PIE. The next question is, what is the measurement of side IE? Side IE naman po ang tinatanong. Again, still, the value of x is 2. Now, ang hinahanap naman po ay value or measurement ni side IE. Alin po ang kakongruent ni side IE? So, we have side LY. Kung titingnan naman natin dito sa ating congruence statement, so, ayan po, malinaw din if we have IE, ang kanyang kakorresponding at ang kanyang kakongruent ay si LY. Again, side IE is equal to side LY. And if LY is 7x minus 4, so therefore, we have 7 times 2 minus 4, which is equals to 14 minus 4. Therefore, the measurement of side IE and also side LY are both 10. Okay? So, yung nawawalang measurement ng side na yun ay 10. Okay. Another question. You have this congruent statement, triangle ONG is congruent to triangle LIM. Okay, so we have here, measure angle N is equal to 49 degrees. Measure angle G is equal to 72 degrees. Now, measure angle I is equal to 5x plus 4. Measure angle L is equal to Z minus 1. And measure angle M is equal to 7y minus 5. The first question is, what is x or what is the value of x para malaman kung anong value ng x nasan ba yung variable na yon so nasa may angle i siya by looking at the congruence statement here angle i is congruent to angle n so we can make an equation using the measurement of angle n and the binomial at angle i so we can say that we have here 5x plus 4 is equals to 49 and then solve algebraically, 5x is equal to 49. What is the additive inverse of positive 4? That's negative 4. 5x is equal to 45. Then divide both sides by 5 para mahanap natin yung value ng x. x is equal to 9. Okay, so ayan na po siya. So to check, pwede nyo po yung isubstitute. 5 times 9 is 45 plus 4 is 49. Okay. Next question, same given. The question is, what is the value of y? So, nasaan naman pong angle yung variable y natin? So, dito siya sa 7y minus 5. And that is angle M. Which among the angles from the first triangle is the congruent angle to angle M? So, if we have M, congruent niya si angle G. Now, measure angle G is 72. So, yun po yung bubuo sa ating equation. 7y Minus 5 is equals to 72. Now, solve algebraically. 7y is equals to 72. What is the additive inverse of negative 5? That's positive 5. Then, 72 plus 5 is 77. Now, we need the value of y. So, divide both sides by 7 para ma-eliminate natin yan. And then, matitira na lang po ay y is equals to 11. Now, the value for the missing variable, which is y, is equals to 11. Okay? So, again, you can substitute the value of y, which is 11, to check. 7 times 11 is 77, minus 5 is 72. Okay. Now, for the last and final question here on the difficult round, the question is, what is z? So, we are going to look for the value of z. Ang z po ay nandito sa ating angle L. And angle L is congruent to angle O. But do we have the measurement of angle O? So, wala pa po. Di po ba? Ang meron lang tayo, angle N which is 49 and angle G which is 72. So, kailangan muna nating mahanap ang measurement ni angle O. And to find the measurement of angle O, we have to subtract the sum of angle N and angle G from 180 degrees. So, add muna natin si 49 and si 72. Then, subtract the sum from 180. So, what is 49 plus 72? That is 121. And 121 subtracted from 180, the answer is 59 degrees. So, measure angle O is 59 degrees. Now, 
to find the value of z, what we need to do is to solve it algebraically. z minus 1 is equal to 59. And then, z is equal to 59, additive inverse of negative 1. That is plus 1. So, z is equal to 60. So, nabuo na po natin yung hinahanap na values. We have the value of x, value of y, and value of z. So, kapag ganito na may nawawala pang another variable and kulang po yung given na angles, actually, hindi naman talaga siya kulang. All you need to do is to add those two angles na given and then subtract it to 180 para makita natin kung ano pa yung nawawalang measurement nung third angle. Saka tayo mag-solve nung ating binomial equals dun sa ating value or measurement ng angle. So, that's all for this topic which is all about solving parts of the triangles that are congruent. Again, nakapag-solve tayo ng missing parts of a triangle because of the different postulates and the CPCTC. If we have two congruent triangles, therefore, the corresponding parts of these two congruent triangles are also congruent. So, what you need to do to solve these parts is to look at the corresponding parts muna ng ating two congruent triangles bago natin ito isolve algebraically. So, that's all for this video. I hope may natutunan kayo. I-like ang video na to, i-share sa mga kaibigan nyo, and then huwag kalimutan mag-subscribe para updated kayo sa mga susunod pang videos. Keep safe everyone. God bless. Bye-bye!